Hello friends, Manipa here and I'm revising this paper that I assembled to just create some kind of a mock for my class 2020 September 2021 physics 5054 could be pure but hey it's just physics all of it is physics let's get to question one an experiment is carried out to find how the pressure of a fixed mass of air at room temperature varies with volume the figure shows the apparatus used the syringe is sealed at one end and the piston is free to move up and down as different metal weights are used. Metal weight, syringe, air in here, the seal, the piston or the plunger, then you've got the scale, volume scale. So the first question there, A reads, state the unit in which pressure is measured. You should take note that the unit and the symbol are two different things. So the unit is Pascal or Pascal. The alternative is a Newton per meter squared newton per meter squared so we write the word itself the unit itself if you want the symbol write pa don't write pa as a unit because the unit is the is then the actual those yeah i'm sure you know what uh, you have understood what i mean so b figure 3.2 shows the axis for the graph of pressure against volume for the air in the syringe one point is plotted on the graph at pressure one and volume one therefore one for pressure and volume one Okay, I know I just yeah fused these ones here because they were not there, so to make things clear, yeah, one comma one. Let's see the graph. There is our graph. This is a one comma one. Therefore, the meet here. This is our mark which is already there on the graph. The first question there says uh, the temperature of the air is kept constant. Of course, figure three point two on figure three point two plot points of volumes of 0 0.5 and 2.0 then complete the graph so 0 0.5 and 2.0 for you to 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 plot to know how to plot these points you should have understood the Boyle's law because this is about Boyle's law pv okay is equals to a constant so the the, the graph comes out as a curve you cannot really a straight line it comes out more like a a decay curve in your physics so you, this graph is telling us to say when pressure is high volume is less when volume is high pressure is less okay so the larger the pressure the smaller the volume so when you compress a gas its pressure will actually increase because you're compressing you're reducing the volume when you allow a gas to occupy a big room there'll be less pressure because there's so much room in which the particles can move about and collide with each other and the walls of their container see more metal weights are placed on the top of the syringe explain how the molecules of air inside the syringe are able to support more metal weights uh, I've tried to explain here. Do not change the meaning, but let us meet in the in the meaning. Let's start from anywhere, but let's meet in the kinetic theory of matter. So my answer here is increase in the weight reduces the volume in uh, volume via compression. You're compressing. You're reducing the volume. Therefore, when you reduce the volume, you are restricting the movements of the uh, gas particles, which have very very high kinetic energy. Therefore, there'll be high pressure. Thus increasing the pressure of the gas on the walls of the syringe it is this increased pressure which supports the added weight yeah that's my answer right there so number two uh, a swing is made by tying two uh tying rope loosely to the branch of a tree as shown in the figure point 2.1 a child swings back and backwards and forwards several times starting at the highest point a this is our highest point and this makes it our lowest point a1 or maybe 21 explain how another child can obtain an accurate measurement of time for the for one complete swing they're saying time for one complete swing they're looking for the or oh, i was looking for the period so my answer is using a stopwatch time a number of swings and record therefore time maybe 10 swings record the time then uh, repeat two or three more times then calculate the period in each okay calculate the periods in all then find the average of the uh, calculated periods therefore you time the swings in five swings and the time it takes then calculate the period then again you time the the the, the, the your friend swinging there and then uh, if you make seven swings then re record the time and the number of swings then calculate the period for all of them if you do it three times what is that yeah here three times then you after you find the three periods in the three sets of your timings then find the average add add the three periods then divide by three then you have your average period there so you're likely to be more accurate rather than just doing it once you time your watch your stopwatch go come then you stop the stopwatch you're likely to make errors like that 
Number two, uh, when the child moves from A to B, she falls a vertical distance of 0.6 meters. She loses 240 joules of gravitational potential energy. The gravitational field is 10. Calculate the mass of the child. We know the formula for GPE is MGH, gravitational potential energy. Therefore, MGH weight times height. Therefore, the energy she loses is this much. Mass, we don't know. G is a constant. The height she falls through is 6.6 meters. So when we do our algebra here, the mass comes out as 4 40 kilograms 40 kilograms uh, the next part there is suggest two reasons why high kinetic energy at b is not equal to 240 we all know the law of energy conservation but suggest two reasons why the kinetic energy may not be as equal to the potential energy she would lose because the moment she's up here she will have a certain amount of potential energy what two reasons can be um behind her not having uh, an, an equal kinetic energy as to the potential energy she had when she was up there i know that part kind of was kind of tough i think for my, most of my learners because it needed you to imagine you get a little bit off-road so according to my answers i wanted them to search so among my answers or the two answers i had was where friction of the swing in its joints and ties therefore friction can cause the swing not to be at the speed that it's supposed to be at point b therefore the higher the speed the, the, the higher the kinetic energy then B air resistance so the second part was supposed to be air resistance air resistance and friction within each joints and ties those were the two answers right there so number three uh, figure 4.1 shows the wave in a string I know this figure it's supposed to be 3.1 or anything but I was just writing because I, I needed to name the figure so figure 4.1 shows a wave on a string um, the wave is traveling towards the right this guy is flipping the rope, you know, up and down, and he creates a wave traveling towards the right. A, describe the movement of the particles in the string. As you can see, he's, he, he's not moving. He's just pulling or uh, swinging the rope up and down. Therefore, the particles are moving up and down to the direction of the wave energy. Therefore, it's creating a transverse wave, if you like. Number B, determine the wavelength of the wave. You look at the the wave itself here so uh, from here up to here that's one cycle one cycle is made of one trough and one crest this is the trough ignore the blue pen this is my pen as I was answering the last part so this is one trough one complete trough then up to this point this is just half a crest and this is half a crest so this half and this half creates one crest and below here this is one trough which gives us some um, one full wave or one full cycle so for me to find the wavelength I need to subtract 0.45 minus 0 0.05 so that I can have just this length here my answer comes out as 0.4 meters was the wavelength of the wave the speed of the wave is 2 meters per second calculate the frequency of the wave I use the wave equation here where I have our velocity is equals to frequency times lambda which is wavelength frequency speed so I make frequency the subject which gives me a velocity over wavelength therefore the velocity is given as this then the wavelength comes from your calculations there giving you that when you do your, your, your divisions there the meter goes over what remain is per second which is this per second it can be written like this and the SI unit for frequency is actually haze so our answer here is 5 haze five haze the next question there too is on figure 4.1 draw a string at a time uh, 0.1 seconds later than in figure 4.1 so draw a wave that is 0.1 meters second later this was my wave here because from there to there this is 0.1 okay you add another 0.1 to give you 0.25 this is 0 0.15 0 0.25 uh, 0 0.35 0 0.45 0.55, 0 0.65. I think you've seen the pattern. So I drew a wave that is cutting through um, a point set uh, at the difference of 0.1 to the original wave that this guy is creating with his rope right there. So we move to the next part. Question four. Figure 5.1 shows a ray of light entering and passing along an optic fiber. Okay, you learn of this at the end of your topic in light, physics, light. So calculate the refractive index of the glass in the optic fiber. Refractive index as a formula, especially if the angle of incidence is not at, 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 uh, at its critical uh, magnitude. Therefore, sine I over sine R. How do you calculate the refractive index? Always take the angle in the less dense material to be your angle of incidence, despite the, 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 the traveling of light because... Uh, light can light uses the same path even if the source is in the glass 
uh, or outside the glass, the, the pathway that light is going to use will be the same, therefore the angles will be the same. But the thing is, refractive index is calculated when light is coming from a less dense material. So this is our thingy and it's already in this way, so our 50 is 50. If light was coming, going that direction towards the 50, this still would have been our angle of incidence. So angle sine 50 over sine 30, my final answer is 153. Uh, no units because it's a ratio, there are divisions right there. So that's that. Uh, number B, explain why the ray of light is totally internally reflected at A. That is our A point there. Uh, total internal reflection is only achieved when the angle of incidence in the glass to this point is greater than the critical angle. Okay, if it's greater than the critical angle, then total internal reflection will be achieved. If it's less than the critical angle, then light will move out, there will be refraction into air. If it's at the critical angle, it means the angle of refraction will be 90 degrees, it will be along the uh, interface. Part B there reads, um, explain why the ray, oh, half actually, I'm just going back to same. So explain why the ray of light is totally internally reflected, because the angle of incidence at the glass air interface is greater than the critical angle c uh, both uh, optic and copper wires optic fibers and copper wires are used in transmission of data the optic fiber is cheaper and, and can carry more data per second than the copper wire states one other advantages of you advantage of using optic fiber rather than copper wire to transmit data uh, they transmit data at very high speeds compared to copper wire. They transmit data in the form of light. Even if the light doesn't move at the speed of 3 exponential 8 meters per second, the light is still, light is still faster than electricity. Okay, it's still way, way faster than electricity or speed. The other one is that they don't easily wear out because they are usually coated and covered. So they don't easily wear out. And then the other one is um, you can have a lot of fibers in one bundle. Like they, they are convenient to use because they come in, 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 in very, very small sizes. Some of them are as small as your hair strand. Now for copper, you have to make it a little bit bigger so it will show a lot of space. The other one is that copper is heavy. Okay, copper is heavy these fibers are less heavy copper is a metal so five electrostatic charges can be replaced can be placed on an object by friction apart from friction not to say this induction can be another method of uh, creating electrostatic charges state the name of the charged particle that is transferred from one object to another in this process z electron z electron is the particle number b uh, figure 5.1 shows petrol, okay, KA gasoline being pumped into a cane. Electrostatic charges build up on the petrol and um, on the petrol and the pipe. Usually the canes are made of metal. You don't easily use, don't use plastic. It's forbidden. Metal is always the best. So that's our diagram right there. Uh, explain why this is dangerous. Uh, my answer there. Let me just read it. This search can lead to spark generation, which can ignite the petrol and cause an explosion. Petrol is flammable. There's nothing much to talk about that. Petra is flammable. Um, I move to the next part. Part two, part two. Two is better than one. Number two, part two. State what can be done to stop the electrostatic charge build up in this way. Earth the cane by putting it down or connect it to an earth wire and also earth the pipe or the pump. Okay, you have to earth. You have to find a way of removing the charge through earthing. Okay. Number six, that's another question. Show the circuit that contains a resistor connected to a power supply of six volts and a lamp L. That's our diagram. Resistor, lamp connected in parallel to each other. That's our power source. And that's our power source right there. So uh, the resistor has a resistance of 60 ohms and the lamp is marked 60, 6 volts, 0.9 watts. We call this power rating. The lamp is rated this much. Calculate one the current in the resistor just in this resistor what's the current um, Current in parallel is not the same, but voltage is the same So I use the formula that will help me calculate for current. That's my voltage. I've been given it six Resistance I have so I simply use this formula by make, giving or making current to be the subject right there Then my answer comes out as 0 0.1. Do not forget the units. That's my answer there and then um uh, the next part there is calculate the current in the power supply in the power supply So when you look at this diagram here, this is the power supply the power supply current is the total current in the circuit So since current in the branches of a parallel section um, Is not the same this means that the sum of the current in this pathway and this pathway will be equal to the current at this point Or this point or let me just say in the power source 
So what the question is asking me to do here is to calculate the current in the, the total current. So I simply find the current. I, I have to calculate the current in the bulb or in the lamp there. So um, power is given, voltage is given, current is what I'm looking for in the bulb or in the lamp. So I make current the subject, then finally I do my math there. What over this gives me 0.15 amp. Then I add the two to give me total current as this. Then 2, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 ampere is the current. B, a second lamp is added to the circuit as shown in figure, uh, shown in the figure above. Um, the second lamp is in series with the 60 ohm resistor but is not in series with the lamp. Uh, in the space below, draw a circuit diagram to um, sh um, diagram for of this new circuit. The power supply, uh, the 60 ohm resistor and the L is drawn for you. So these are given. Then they wanted to draw a lamp which is not in series with this one but in series with that one. So meaning that it should be like this. I've labeled it L2. L2. So, um, this is how you would finish it. It can even be on the other side or this side, doesn't matter. Um, the lamps are identical, therefore these two lamps are identical. Explain why the second lamp is dimmer than lamp L. Uh, no calculation is required. So because it is sharing voltage with the resistor, voltage in power in series is not the same, but the current is the same. So the same current which was here, which we calculated for, which is 0.1, is what is here. But voltage will change. Okay, the voltage here will change because they are now in series. In series, voltage is not the same. They are sharing the voltage. That's why this guy is going to be dimmer than the other guy. This is the reason why even in the house, the circuits are connected in parallel because if they were in series, the moment you switch on appliances like the cooker, the geyser, or the heater, you'd find that your bulbs or other circuits will be affected and you have less energy. Okay, because voltage is, I would say, uh, roughly, I would just say it's energy. The next question there is, uh, figure 7.1 shows the color-coded bands on a resistor. The table, figure 7.2 shows the color codes. The color codes. Uh, that's our resistor right there. These are the bands. You should not to say the one which is close to the edge is band number one. You cannot start counting from this edge where you have this space. So this is band number one, number two, number three. So state the colors on the first three bands of a 4700 ohm resistor. 4700 ohm resistor. The first one is yellow. How do I know it's yellow? I look at the the the, the band number one. Okay, band number one. Therefore, um. The resistor value is 4700. The band number one represents the first digit in the resistance. The first digit is four. So I look for the four, for the color which represents the color whose code is four. Yellow is has the code of four. The second band represents the second digit in the resistance, which is seven. So I look for a band which is coded seven. Violet is coded seven. And lastly, the third band, always represents the number of knots or the number of zeros therefore there are two zeros here so the third band is a two because there are two zeros here so it is this one if the, if we had three zeros here i would have looked for a band that uh, represents three then it would have been orange so the band which occurs number three represents the number of zeros so its code represents the number of zeros those are our colors right there b a 4700 ohm resistor with the a uh, voltmeter across it is connected in series with the variable resistor of six uh, to a six uh, volt supply. The variable resistor can have any value between zero to forty seven hundred. Therefore, the maximum of the variable resistor, which is also known as the real start, is forty seven. But this one is a fixed resistor, whose resistance is forty seven ohm. As the resistance of the variable resistor is altered, determine the largest reading on the voltmeter. The voltmeter is connected across the fixed resistor. So when the uh, the largest reading on the voltmeter will be 6 volts, when the real start is at 0, because a variable resistor is also known as the real start. So when it's turned to 0 resistance, therefore it will, the, the, the PD across the other one who's fixed will be maximum, it will, it will consume the whole, it will be the one um, experiencing the whole 6 volts. Therefore the maximum reading on the voltmeter across the fixed resistor will be 6 volts. Uh, the smallest reading on the voltmeter will be 3 volts. Therefore, when the variable resistor or the real start is tuned to the maximum, you should take note that the distribution of voltage across two resistors in series is simply in the ratio of their resistance. 
So if the real start is turned to 47, then they'll be the same. They'll have the same resistance. Therefore, the ratio will be 1 to 1. Therefore, they'll share the, the voltage 50-50. Okay, 50-50. So this will be 3 volts. Uh, 8 uh, shows the basic uh, structure of a cathode ray oscilloscope CRO. Some parts are missing. Okay, some parts are missing. Electrons are emitted from the filament by thermionic emission. Okay, explain what is meant by thermionic emission. Thermionic emission. Sorry, my paper is moving there. As you know, our learning is all about paper and pen. So my paper is moving. Just a minute. Okay, better now. So explain what thermionic emission from the we can tell the thermionic emission. Therefore, uh, this is the release of electrons from the surface of the hot metal. I could have said hot substance, but some substances which are non-metals don't easily emit electrons. They don't. But metals do that. So that is the definition of thermionic emission. Number B, uh, electrons hit the screen at high speed. Explain how the electrons are made to travel at high speed. By making the anode more positive, should take note to say the anode has got two functions in an in a serial ore. The first function the first function is to focus the cathode ray. Then the second function is to accelerate the cathode ray. So the more the cathode is made positive, the higher the electrons will be accelerated. C. A spot on the screen is made to move up and down and also cross across the screen. The parts of the CRO that make this happen are not shown in the figure. Draw and label these parts on the figure. Okay, I didn't draw them in advance. Let me just draw them then I'll copy so that we don't waste so much time. I'm done drawing. Um, these are my X plates. They deflect the cathode ray side to side. They are plates that are that are standing. I would say, um, yeah, I think this. I don't know how to explain this position. Therefore, they deflect particles side to side. And then these are Y plates. Sometimes the Y plates and X plates are put together. And the Y plates, yeah, will be up and down there to form something like a box. Okay, so they are named after the deflection directions they have on the cathode ray okay those are other two parts that would be missing there but of course there are other parts missing there like the grid and the anode being split into two parts and sometimes the cathode is drawn uh, separately this is a high voltage dc supply okay so i move on to the next part i think okay so i made this part to be my section b no section c it's just some kind of a test but again more like a mock but just for them to just answer just for them to show that they have learned or they can remember one or two things so figure 9.1 shows satellite in orbit around the earth man the earth is so big and i always feel small but again when i look at the size of the earth into jupiter the earth goes in 1300 times okay into jupiter and again jupiter goes into the sun 1000 times Okay, and again, the sun, our sun, our solar, our, our, our solar, our Helios, goes into the largest star in the in the Milky Way five about five billion times, which is UY Scati. Okay, the, the star known as UY Scati. How small are we, people? How small are we? Okay, back to my question. The satellite travels at the constant speed in a circular orbit okay travel at constant speed you should be marking such words constant speed which is the same as constant velocity uh in some way number one underline the quantities in the list below that are scalars therefore scalar quantity only has magnitude therefore speed is a scalar and then mass is also a scalar acceleration is vector force is vector velocity is vector uh, number two, velocity of the satellite changes, but its speed is constant. Okay, state what is meant by velocity. My answer there is rate of change of displacement. Okay, as straightforward as that. Number two, why is the velocity changing? Because we're saying that the speed is constant, but velocity is changing. It's because direction keeps changing. It's moving, and at every every given point, your displacement will be in a different direction. The fact that displacement is changing, therefore velocity is also changing. Okay, the velocity is also changing, even if its magnitude, its speed part is constant. So you have to see that difference there. Number two, one or two, two. Or oh, let me just say this was um explain why the velocity. How, how did I label this? Okay, this is okay. This was two. Then this is my three. Explain what makes the satellite move in an orbit that is circular because of the centripetal force created by the gravitational pull, the Earth's gravitational pull. The centripetal force is a force that uh, causes a body moving in a circular path to accelerate towards the center. 
okay if you go back to physics allow me to just go a little bit off road centripetal force is given the formula is given as f centripetal force is equals to mv squared over r where r is the radius okay r is the radius there's also centripetal acceleration but you can do your research for yeah, for the other times so we we'll get to the next question b a satellite is placed into orbit by a rocket um a satellite is placed into orbit by a rocket figure 9.2 shows the rocket as it takes off man how i love rockets uh thrust engine uh resultant force weight those are three forces okay this is your total force the force the unbalanced force the opposing force the rocket and fuel have a total mass of 40,000 and a total weight of 400,000 newtons. The resultant force acting upwards the rocket is 50,000 newtons. Calculate the thrust um, produced by the rocket. Calculate this thrust. Uh, the thrust is the gross force or the total force, the overall force. Therefore, you have to add if this guy, if the weight is 400,000 newtons, which is the pull down, okay? Uh, you should know to say uh, the thrust or the action force is equals to the reaction force uh, uh, plus the, 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 the resultant force. So my resultant force plus the, uh, the, the, the opposing force uh, will give me the total amount of what this force is. It's 40, 450,000 newtons. 450,000 newtons but part of this 450,000 newtons is used to overcome the weight therefore what remains the unbalanced force the force that is bringing about the acceleration is the 50,000 newtons which is causing the rocket to go upwards we get to the next question uh, question two or part two calculate the acceleration of the rocket remember the resultant force also known as the unbalanced force also known as the net force is the one that brings about the acceleration uh, therefore my formula comes from Newton's third law of motion where I make acceleration my my what my subject then I do my divisions this is force over mass therefore the force bring about the acceleration over the mass on which it's acting my final answer is this which can be written like that okay uh, see in the first four minutes after takeoff, the acceleration of the rocket is uniform. State what is meant by uniform acceleration. A steady increase in velocity. Steady increase in velocity is uniform acceleration. Uh, therefore, you just look for another term of uh, apart from uniform. Um, describe the motion of the rocket in the first 12 motion. The figure here, the table here, is describing the motion. Um, on figure 9.4, sketch the speed time graph of the rocket for the first 12 minutes. You do not need to give values for speed, therefore just sketching, okay? Therefore, uh, from 0 to 4 minutes, the rocket was accelerating uniformly. This is my uniform acceleration. Remember the graph of a velocity time graph, okay? Velocity time, the gradient represents acceleration. So this is uniform acceleration. I could have used a, a ruler, but um, I guess I used my hands, but I, I still managed to sketch something which makes sense. So uniform acceleration, then from six, from four to six, increasing acceleration. Therefore, there's this increase in acceleration, okay? Although they haven't said uniform increase in my line is straight. So let me just say increasing in acceleration um, simply means there's this steeper, the gradient is more steep, meaning there's an increase in acceleration. Then from 6 to 10, decrease in acceleration. Therefore, acceleration comes down. Okay, there's this decrease here. And then finally, from 10 to 12 minutes, there's constant speed. Therefore, we've got this constant speed, meaning acceleration is zero. Because when speed is constant, acceleration is zero. Although it's not the same as in those secular, uh, secular motion. This leads us to our, our last question in this paper. Hopefully, it was helpful. Therefore, state how the speed time graph in two can be used to find the distance traveled by a rocket by calculating the total area under the graph okay total area so the area represents distance the gradient represents acceleration this paper was nice i hope you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe and share this with friends as we keep on revising in these yeah in these in these towards as we go towards the exam i'll call it a day bye bye for now